All right, ladies and gentlemen, in the morning, we're making waffles. I'm just kidding. But in this tutorial, we are going to make this waffle right here, which is 100% procedural. You can see here, all we got is a single cube right there or square. And we're going to make this awesome procedural waffle right here with this node setup. Now this is really, really cool because we could change the waffle scale right here. So we could make it have more squares or less. Now it's going to take a little bit of time to update because I'm in cycles and it's denoising. But you can see right here we could change the waffle scale right there. We could change the amount of chocolate so we could put more or less chocolate. For example, if we wanted no chocolate, we could put this to zero. I don't know who wants no chocolate on their waffles, but that is an option. And right here we also have the powdered sugar. So we could change the powdered sugar as well. Let's say we wanted zero. We could put that to zero and now we have no powdered sugar once again you know powdered sugar is always good so let's add that back and check this out we could even move the butter around if we select this empty this is based on the object texture coordinates we can hit g shift z and move the butter to wherever we want just like that how awesome is that super cool so we're going to take a look at how to do all of this in this tutorial. It might be broken up into different videos because this is quite the setup, but it's going to be a lot of fun and we're going to learn a lot about the different nodes to create this. If you'd like to go more in depth in nodes, check out the nodes course that I just launched. We go over every single shader node and every single compositing node with all their options and how to practically use them to create some awesome materials. If you're interested in that, Click the link in the description and don't forget to check out blendermania3.com as that is the official site. So let's get right into it and create this awesome procedural waffle. All right, first things first, in a brand new scene, we're gonna have a plane and add a material to that plane. And make sure to go to rendered viewport shading mode. So we're gonna break this down into different sections. We're first going to do the waffle or square parts of it. So to do that, let's first hit shift A we're going to get a separate XYZ node right here. And make sure you have Node Wrangler enabled. With it selected, hit Control T, add a mapping and texture coordinate. Delete this image texture. And let's plug the vector to the vector. And we're going to change this from UV to object right here. Now, the separate XYZ is going to separate out. If we Control Shift left click, it's going to separate out our X, Y, and Z channels. You can see here we have X. Y and Z, which we won't see right here because we only have two dimensions. But this goes from a value of negative one right here. So negative one right here, zero right here, and one right here. So again, these different values are represented by the colors as well. You can see that negative one is obviously black because it's below zero. Zero is black and a value of one is going to be white. And then we have in between values in between these values right here. Now what I want to do is I want to go ahead and make a single square first for our waffle. So to do this, we're going to hit shift A. We're going to get a math node. And with this math node, we're going to change it from add to absolute. So right here, absolute. And let's drop this after the separate XYZ. Now the absolute value of a number is basically how many units that number is away from zero so for example here we would have negative five negative four negative three negative two negative one and zero and then positive one two three four five so the absolute value of for example negative three is three because it's three units away from zero so one two three so the absolute value of negative three is three. The absolute value of let's say four is going to be four. So the absolute value of four is four and the absolute value of negative five is five. You get the point. So again, the absolute value is basically how many units that number is away from zero. So we're taking this separate X, Y, Z, which normally goes from negative one to zero to one and we're getting the absolute value of those. So you can see here, if I control shift left click the separate XYZ, we have this negative one, zero and one. 
And then with absolute value, the absolute value of negative one is one. So right here, it's going to be white. The absolute value of zero is zero. So here it's going to be zero. And the absolute value of one is still one. So right there, it's also going to be one. So now we have these new values. Let me go ahead and write them at the top right here. So we have one right here, one, zero, and one going this way. Now what we wanna do is do the same for the Y. So let's control shift left click the Y. You can see we have negative one to zero to one on the Y. Let's select the absolute value, shift D, duplicate it and drop it there. So now we have the same thing. We have the absolute value on the Y channel. So here we have one right here on the white, zero right here and one over here. So it's going from one to zero to one. Now what we want to do is select one of these, shift D, duplicate it. Let's change this to add and we're going to add both of these. So let's plug this one there and that one there and control shift left click that. And now you can see what we get right here. And the reason we get this pattern is because again, it's adding this one right here of one, zero and one, and this one right here of one, zero and one, which gives us this. So if you look at this one, let me zoom in a little bit. One plus one right here is two. One right here plus one is also two. One plus one is two right here in this corner and one plus one right here is also two. And then here in the middle, we have zero plus zero, which is zero right here. So now we have these different values of here in the center, we have zero, and in the corners, we have a value of two. And then right here, obviously, we have transitioning values. So we have zero right here. Then we have like 0.5, a value of one right here, 1.5 right here, and two right here. And so now you can see that it transitions between zero in the middle to two in the corners. And we're getting this pattern because we're adding both of these, which gives us these new values, which again, the values equate to different color ranges. One being white, zero being black, anything below zero is black, and anything above one is even more white, as you can see right there. All right, let me erase this amazing annotation. So now we have this pattern here, however, it's not really a square. It's kind of like a star shape. So what I'm going to do after the math add node, I'm going to hit shift a, add a color ramp and drop this in. Now this color ramp is going to act. This stop right here is going to act as our black values. And this one right here as our white values. So if we bring this up like this, you can see that now we're contrasting the white and the black and we get more of a square. So let's bring this one down as well. So now we have a square right here. How awesome is that? That's pretty cool. However, I've never seen a waffle with one square. So now we need to make it so that we have multiple squares. To do that, we're gonna go back over here after the mapping and we're gonna hit Shift A. Let's get a vector math. So not a math, but a vector math. It's the same thing as the math node. However, it's used to distort or change the vectors. Now here, if I control shift left click our mapping node, you can see that we have our texture coordinates right here with it set to object. And right here, we can see that here in the middle, this is the origin and this is zero right here. This way it goes from zero to one on the X, as you can see it's red. Over here, it's zero to one on the Y. As you can see right here, it's green. And then here, it's a mixture of the green and red which equates to yellow. And then on this side, we have the negative values and that's why it's black. But the point is that we only have one square or one pattern. We want to multiply this or fraction it off. So we're gonna change this add vector math to fraction right here and drop this after the mapping. Now, if we control shift left click it, or if it already is, you can see that now we fractioned those texture coordinates into four different quadrants. And now we can see that zero starts at this bottom left corner and it goes from zero to one on the X, zero to one on the Y, and it's doing that for four different sections. So right here we have zero, zero to one, zero to one, and right here as well, zero, zero to one, etc. You get it. So now we have four 
different sections of this texture coordinate. If we plug our fraction into our separate X, Y, Z right there, you can see if I control shift left click the color ramp, we now have this cube fractioned off into four different quadrants. However, we have one issue, and that is that the cube you can see is at the center of the cube is at the bottom left corner of each of the quadrants. And that's because the generation or the origin of that coordinate is right here on the bottom left. So to change that, let's go over here. Let's move this over. And we're, we're going to go ahead and hit Shift A, or we could just grab this one. Let's grab the fraction, Shift D, duplicate it. Let's change this to Add right here. And let's drop the Add right after. Let's Control Shift left click this so we can see what's happening. Once again, you could see that it's originating or generating from the bottom left of each of the corners. So we want to move this. With the add function, it acts as it's moving on the X, Y, or Z axis right here. So if we change on the X, you can see that it shifts that texture coordinate on the X. Let's go ahead and put this to negative 0.5 so that now our origin is right here instead of over here. And if we put it to negative 0.5 on the Y as well, you can see that now the origin of each of these quadrants is in the center right here. So our cube will generate from the center instead of the bottom left where it was before. You can see if I select the add vector math and mute it, this was before, and this is now with moving that coordinate system. So now if we control shift left click our color ramp, you can see what we got there. We have the squares generating from the center right here instead of the bottom left corner. Now, one issue is that they are rotated the wrong way. Now you'd think you could go over here and rotate the Z rotation right here. However, doing so will rotate the whole texture coordinate system. And that's not what we want. We want to rotate these individual squares. So to do that, we're gonna go after this add Shift A, add a vector rotate right here, and drop this right after. Let's go ahead and control shift left click it once again to see what's happening. And let's change this from axis angle to Z axis as we're gonna be rotating it on the Z axis. And you can see here, if I rotate the angle, you can see that it's rotating the individual texture coordinates. So let's put this to 45 as we want to rotate our cube 45 degrees. And once again, if we control shift left click our color ramp, you can see that now we have some squares. Very, very cool. So we have four squares, but let's say we wanted more than four squares. Well, quite simple. We could go over here before the fraction. Let's select this one, shift D, duplicate it. And we're going to change this to scale. And then just drop this right before the fraction. And this is quite self-explanatory if you scale this up it will scale up your texture coordinate system and you can see we could have more or less squares which is really awesome let's put this back to one for now and there we go we've created the majority or the biggest part of the waffle which is the squares system right here pretty freaking awesome now let's go ahead and add the actual material of our waffle for that i'm going to select the principal bsdf here shift a Let's get a Musgrave texture. This is going to be rather simple for the actual material. Let's put the Musgrave above the color ramp just to organize this a little bit. And I'm going to go ahead and bring this up here as well. Then let's plug this coordinate system, so the vector right here, into the vector of our Musgrave texture. Let's also control shift left click our Musgrave texture to see what it looks like. And for this, we want to dictate the different colors that our waffle is going to be. So Shift A, add a color ramp right here and drop that in right there. Now, once again, the black stop is going to dictate the colors of the black parts and the white stop is going to dictate the color of the white parts. Now for this, you could go on Google Images and type in waffle hex codes and you could get different waffle hex codes for the different colors of waffles. I'm just gonna go ahead and use the hex codes from my previous dot blend. So for that, for this black slider, I'm gonna put the hex code A6632A. And for the white color, I'm gonna put the hex code D9A359. Now you can put whatever kind of colors you want, but I'm going to go with those. And then let's plug the color 
into the base color of the principal BSDF and control shift left click that. All right, so we got that right there, which looks nothing like a waffle and that's because we need to add our squares in. Now for the squares, we're gonna use it as a displacement later on, but for now, just so we could see what it looks like, let's hit shift A, add a bump and put it right there. We're gonna plug this color from our color ramp, which is this right here, into the height and the bump into the normal right here. So now it's going to take this data and it's basically going to make it look like it has bump depending on where it's black right here or where it's white. So wherever it's white, it's going to look raised and wherever it's black, it's going to look indented. Let's control shift left click our principal BSDF. And there we go, check that out, pretty cool. Let's put the distance down. The distance is going to dictate how intense this is. So let's put the distance down to 0.1 for now. Once again, in the Blender nodes course I launched, I go over every single node and every single option and what it does and how to use it. So if you're interested in learning more about nodes, once again, check that out. As here, I'm not going in depth on every single node as that would take forever. All right, so here we have our waffle look. Let's also go over here. We're going to put the subsurface to 0.1. Now again, subsurface scattering is basically the light will scatter through the surface, subsurface below the surface and scattering, meaning it will scatter. So the light will scatter below the surface of your object, bounce around, some of the light will get lost and some of the light will bounce back out. It's kind of like if you hold your hand or finger to the sun or a flashlight, you will see the light scattering through the surface of your finger bouncing around, again, some of the light gets lost in there and some of the light bounces back out and it creates this look of, again, subsurface, below the surface, scattering of the light. So this will give us a nice look to our waffle. For the subsurface color, I'm gonna go ahead and paste that same hex code for now, so D9A359 right there. And I'm gonna put the roughness of our waffle up to like a 0.8 or so. All right. It looks pretty terrible right now, but don't worry, we're only at the beginning. Next, let's go ahead and make the butter. So we have the waffle right here, let's make the butter. For the butter, we need a single square. So for that, we're gonna go ahead, since we already have a square system set up here, we're gonna select our separate XYZ, the two absolute nodes, the add node, and the color ramp right here. And then we're gonna hit Shift D, duplicate it, Let's bring this over here. And with this separate XYZ, let's hit Control T, add a texture coordinate and a mapping node, delete the image texture and plug this into the vector, connect the object to the vector, and let's Control Shift left click this. So here you can see we have a single square, which is going to be our butter. Brilliant. You can't have a waffle without butter. Well, actually I don't really care for butter on my waffles. I rather have some maple syrup, whipped cream, or some chocolate for sure. But we're gonna have chocolate and powdered sugar in just a second. Now one thing with this square or this butter, we don't want it to be so straight on the edges. We want it to be a little bit uh, distorted or wavy. So to do that, we're gonna do a cool little setup here. We're gonna hit Shift A, search for, or actually go to color. By the way, they replaced the mix RGB node with the mix color. It's exactly the same thing basically, however it has a couple other options, but it does the same function as the Mix RGB. But just know Mix RGB has been replaced by Mix Color. So let's get a Mix Color. And this is very interesting because now instead of slot one and slot two, it's A and B, very interesting. And like I said, this does the same exact thing and more. But with this, what we're going to do is right here we have our vector from our mapping. And our vector from our mapping is just the standard vector. But we want to distort this vector. So we're gonna plug this vector into slot A right here. Let's control shift left click our mix right here. And then we're gonna hit shift A. We're gonna search for a noise texture right there. And plug the vector into the vector and the color into slot B. And you will see what this does now. So now with the factor at zero, it's our original vectors and mapping. With a factor of one, it's taking our vector and distorting it through this noise texture. And as you can see, it distorts it completely. 
Now one thing you will see, let's control shift left click, let's plug this into the separate XYZ first, and then control shift left click our color ramp. You will see one issue is that if we put this at zero, our butter is there, and as we increase this, the butter starts to move to the side. So let's change this from mix to linear light, which will fix that issue. So now it will just distort it, as you can see, it will just distort it and not shift it off into the side, which is obviously very useful. I'm gonna increase this a little bit over here with the noise texture. Honestly, you could put this to whatever you want, depending on how you want this to look. You can see here, if we increase the scale, it gets more noise or more distortion on the side. If we put this lower, it's more of a wavy kind of look, as you can see right there. You could put the detail up, but since this is butter, I don't want it to have so much noise or waviness. I'm gonna put the scale to two, so that's a little bit kind of wavy like that. And the detail, we could put the detail down if you want more of a kind of wavy look, or you could put it up if you want it to be a little bit more detailed and more noise on the edges. I'm just gonna leave it to a default of two, but again, you could mess around with it however you want. Same with the factor, depending on how crazy you want your butter to be, you could you know make it like that if you want. I'm just gonna increase this just a little bit. Once again, factor of zero is the original vector. As you increase this, it will take into account more of the noise and distort it more. So right here, I'm going to just increase this to something like that for now. All right, awesome, so we have our butter now or at least the mask for our butter. All right, now with this butter, we need to mix it with our waffle. So we have this right here, and we have the butter right here. So to do that, let's first make the butter color, because again, right now that's just a mask. Shift A, add a principled BSDF. And here for the butter, let's control shift left click it. We're gonna make the butter material. Once again, you could go to Google and search butter hex code to get different hex codes for butter. I'm gonna use the one I had in my previous dot blend, which is E7D78D, bingo. No, I'm just kidding. All right, there we go, we got the base color. Once again, I want to add some subsurface uh, scattering, 0.1, and let's put the subsurface color to the same thing right there. Also, I wanna put the roughness down as I want this to be a little bit shiny, so to like point 0.2 or so, so 0.2, something like that. Very nice, so now we got our butter. By the way, just so we could see what everything looks like a little bit better, let's go to our light, change it to a sun lamp with a value of four, and we'll add an HDRI after, and that will help with the lighting too, but for now, let's just change our light to a sun lamp. All right, here we need to mix the waffle that we have here. Again, I'm control shift left clicking and the butter. Let's hit shift A, add a mix shader. And I'm gonna plug this waffle right here into the bottom shader and the butter into the top one right here. Let's go ahead and control shift left click that and move this aside. Now you can see what's happening. Factor of zero is 100% this top shader right here. And factor of one is 100% this second or bottom shader right here. And this is based once again on the values of zero and one. So again, zero is this top shader, one is this bottom shader. And if we look at our butter right here, control shift left click it, once again, values or colors of black are a value of zero, and the colors that are white are a value of one. So again, the colors and the values are interchangeable. So if we plug this color into the factor right here, it's gonna go ahead and it's gonna take the parts that are black or the butter, and it's gonna give it this top shader socket, which is our butter, and it's gonna take the parts that are white or our waffle and give it this bottom shader right here. So let's go ahead and control shift left click that, and you can see five hours later, that that's exactly what happens. Again, where there was the black, it's going to be this shader, and where there is the white, it's going to be this shader right here. Very, very cool. Now you can see the butter is a little bit hazy on the edges. 
If you want to contrast it more, just bring this white slider down more. You can see you could contrast it more or make it uh, spread out a little bit more. It could also give it a melting effect if you spread it out more, but I'm going to contrast it a little bit more. So now we have our butter and our waffle. We are making good progress, ladies and gentlemen. Let's go ahead and make the chocolate now, since again, the main parts are the butter, the waffle, and the chocolate. Of course, the powdered sugar too, but that's really easy. 